inshore and offshore marine habitats that characterize our region, the Mid-Atlantic, support a rich diversity of marine life. Turtles, and whale, and dolphin, and seabirds, and commercially important and recreational, recreationally important arrays of fish and crustacean. But wind and other energy sources like oil and gas and marine hydrokinetic facilities, divers, ship operations, beachgoers, scientific expeditions, recreational boaters, and military operations training all vie for these same waters where these creatures live. This film, I think, will help you understand the competition for some of the most important space on our planet, our coastal oceans. Now, for years, the ocean was seen as a discrete entity. Ocean policy was minimal, and science concentrated on the briny, roiling, deep blue ocean, always just over the horizon from where you stood on land. Today we know, we realize, we recognize that the ocean touches the shore in a very complex way and also touches the atmosphere and it touches the ocean bottom and it touches the ice, it surrounds the ice at the bottom of the world and it supports the ice on the top of the world. These are very complicated relationships that change quickly with time and even with just a few meters of distance. Moreover, the ocean collides with human activity. And suddenly we recognize that ocean decision-making makes uh, is, has a, a social science, not just a physical science, component. Humans, the world around, are flocking to the shore, and for many reasons. And when they're there, they do and build many things. In the United States alone, about 3,000 people a day move to a coastal watershed county. This is undisputable global change. You can talk about global warming if you want, you can talk about climate change if you want, you'll get all kinds of disputes. But nobody can, can dispute that so many people are moving to the edge of the ocean every day all over the world. It's happening everywhere, mostly for quality of life or prosperity reasons. And it makes sense that those that move to the, to the shore should not re ruin the, uh, the very reason that they moved there uh, for. So as man approaches the coast continually, he encounters a complex relationship among land and freshwater and seawater and recreation and commerce. And these relationships demand careful management. I think this film will show that. And I salute the producer, Karen Myers, and I also salute Tony McDonald because this is what we talk about in the Urban Coast Institute every way, every day. Beware, folks. Beyond creating rules that deal with these issues that this film punctuates, we also have to understand and more clearly and more clearly and more widely the scientific background, complexities of the coastal ocean. And then once we understand them, measure them faithfully, continually, broadly, over long periods of time. So that the rules that we make for using the ocean are useful, effective, credible, and are a basis for making modifications to those rules as we learn more. And that they consider both the needs of the ocean and the people who count on the ocean for its sustainment and their sustainment. Rules made for emotional or political reasons without commensurate Commitment to understand the physical process of the oceans can be hollow. And in the end, rules without credibility can push citizens away from responsible behavior. Our Urban Coast Institute is currently working on these kinds of issues with counterparts across New Jersey. We're actually being paid to do this. Handsomely, I think Tony says with a big smile on his face. <laughs> Uh, across New Jersey uh, with colleagues in New York and Delaware and Maryland and Virginia to encourage cooperation in providing the kinds of technical information to make credible and informed ocean policy decisions. So with that backdrop, enjoy this terrific film tonight.